so I've just talked about heart valves and in staying with the heart I'm going to talk about pacemakers and implantable defibrillators. So in talking about pacemakers and implantable defibrillators, the term that we're talking about really is cardiac rhythm management, which I will be talking about in, in a general sense when I talk about pacemakers. So internal defibrillators or cardiac resynchronization therapy for pacemakers uh, constitute the main field of cardiac rhythm management. So they deal with uh, certain heart conditions such as arrhythmias, which is deviation from the normal rhythm of the heart. Uh, bradycardia is abnormally slow heart action. Tachycardia, abnormally fast heart rate or heart failure in itself. Uh, so pacemakers are, set the rhythm rhythm correctly, and, and that is their function. So a pacemaker rhythm control is um, one area, internal ventricular defibrillation or cardiac resynchronization. So the rhythm control, as I said, that, that adjusts the rhythm. Uh, defibrillization um, is, is a method of restarting. So if, um, if the heart starts pumping, defibrillization uh, gives an electrical impulse to start pumping again. A cardiac resynchronization, um, re-establishing a rhythm of the heart. So pacemakers are typically used to correct these rhythm abnormalities. And they consist of a number of different components. So there's a pulse generator, which includes a battery pack, uh, which would be in here. Um, there are some lead wires and then there are electrodes that actually go into the heart tissue. Uh, implantable defibrillators restart the heart if it has dropped too low or it has start, stopped altogether. So early designs of these, um, it's quite interesting. So in the 1950s, the early designs were external. Uh, the lead wires went through the skin uh, into the heart. They were very cumbersome. They were very heavy. Um, so the weight of a, of a reasonably big child. Um, they connected to AC supplies in some cases, so had the potential to electrocute you or to big uh, lead acid car batteries. Um, so the development in of the silicon transistor uh, marked a, a big game changer in um, pacemaker technology. And in 1958, the first wearable uh, pacemaker was designed. Um, so it looks something like this now. Um, the generator is inserted between the skin and the pectoralis major, which is uh, your chest muscle. So it's inserted uh, under the skin and between your, your skin and any muscle, and it sits there. Um, the lead wires then go into the inside the subclavian vein. So subclavian is the vein just, just below the collarbone um, and into the heart. Um, there is an RA lead, um, which, uh, which dual chamber devices have, an RV lead, which nearly all devices have, and then some of them have a coronary sinus lead as well. So there may be one or more leads which go into different areas of the heart to stimulate um, muscular contraction, so electromuscular contraction. Um, so if we looked at the evolution of the design, and uh, these are Medtronic pacemakers, and um, so these are the size of the pacemakers that have been marketed by Medtronic through the ages. So you can see the dramatic reduction in size down to nearly a seventh of the original size. And we'll talk about the latest one at the end of the slide, which is smaller again. Um, so this is the, the most recent pacemaker and it's called the leadless pacemaker. Medtronic have led the charge with this. Uh, so I've posted an FDA press release here from April uh, this year. And uh, what it says, the Food and Drug Administration today approved the first pacemaker that does not require the use of wired leads. It's called a micro transcatheter pacing system. It works like other pacemakers to regulate heart rate. The self-contained inch long device is implanted directly into the right ventricle chamber of the heart. And you can see it in there. So they say it shouldn't be, it's not much bigger than a vitamin pill and it's implanted into the heart and it paces from there. 
there's no lead uh, and it's minimally invasive because they can implant a trans catheter with a trans catheter. So they can um, they can implant it by uh, inserting it on some sort of balloon mounted device uh, through the femoral artery. So this is a very exciting development, it's really tiny. Um, and St. Jude Medical have another device um, which has not been FDA approved yet, as I know, but I do think it has EU approval, so I might be wrong on that, but uh, St. Jude Medical have a similar device. So what is the function of this pacemaker? It sends heartbeat. If it's not detected within normal beat to beat time period, it will stimulate the ventricle of the heart with a short, low voltage, voltage pulse. The batteries are lithium iodide. They don't have gas evolution, so it, it, they can be sealed without a vent to external. And it's very important uh, because it's fully implantable that you don't need a vent to external. There's a very low instant rate of premature battery exhaustion or moisture infiltration. Um, it's implanted either beneath the skin, onto the inner lining of the heart, which is endocardial, or directly onto the outer surface of the heart, which is epicardial. The pacemaker leads must be flexible, durable, non-corrosive, and very good electrical conductors. Um, so they are um, typically subjected to 30 to 400 million cycles per annum and have to be able to withstand this sort of cycling on an ongoing basis without failure. So they're usually made from cobalt, chromium, um, molybdenum alloys, or nickel, or combinations of these. So metals that we are familiar with from other sections of the course. They're flexible, uh, flexible metals, durable, non-corrosive, and a good electrical conductor. They're the prerequisites. Early version these were coated with polyuretans, but they're now coated with things such as silicon rubbers. There are generally very few complications with pacemakers as there's little or no blood flow contact with them in themselves. But in some cases, some thromboembolic uh, problems can occur at the lead tips. Um, so this is just a pacemaker design, so you can see battery, electronic circuit board, uh, antenna for sensing. Heartbeat, it's all cased in a casing and the leads um, perform the work. So how are they manufactured? They are usually um, using a variety of metal processing, so examples metal injection molding may be used to make the metal casing, uh, extrusion for the leads themselves, so wire extrusion. Um, metal extrusion with the leads. Um, Co-extrusion might happen to insulate the leads as they are being extruded. The electronic controls then um, would be made, um, there would be some sort of welding processing um, to, um, to weld electronic components onto the motherboard and some very fine assembly work. Uh, and the most importantly is assembly. So the electronics, the battery, um, and the leads are getting them into the casing, and there would be some sort of welding process there. So again, who makes them? So as I said, Medtronic really ha have led the charge. They've dominated the market in, in pace making since the beginning. They've just introduced, got FDA approval for this new revolutionary device, uh, St. Jude Medical, very, very large player as well. And I have highlighted uh, other big players in the pacemaker market. So that is on pacemakers and the MOOC on medical device manufacturing. And I hope that you have learned um, different aspects of how medical devices are made, how they're classified, how to go about getting EU approval, FDA approval, labeling, packaging, sterilization, and a number of different things that we've covered. And thank you for tuning in.